Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the seventh edition of Malvex Power Talk, brought to you by Malvex 2021. I am Joyce, and I'm your host for this session. I know it's been a busy week, and at this hour, I want to congratulate you for being here, and we believe there's no better time than now to share on going green and saving money. So before we begin, can I know how many of you have already started dining out? Type Y for yes and no, and N for no at the comment section. All right, um, let's see. So any of you has been dining out already? Please type Y for yes and N for no. Right, I see uh, Mr. Tan, yes, Lillian, yes. Well, I guess many of you have already missed dining out after months of dining at home. And, and I see, yep, there are some, and Ryan, no. All right, okay, so those who are out and about, please always remember to stay safe. Once again, it's great to have all of you with us here today. Malex Power Talk is a series of on-point discussion where leaders and experts converse and deliberate about the opportunities and challenges faced by the ever-growing, reshaping, and uplifting of the air conditioning, mechanical ventilation, and refrigeration industry. This Power Talk is brought to you by Malex 2021, which is the inaugural ACMV and R business event for ASEAN scheduled to take place this year from 1st to 4th of December at Kuala Lumpur Convention Center. Mawex is jointly organized by MACRA and CIS and is held concurrently at Engineer, where we strive towards becoming the premier event for the primary source of ACMV and our stakeholders, while providing a unique platform for the growth and development of the industry in this region. We have prepared a short video to show you how you can leverage on this dedicated business event for your business. Malwest will create a new milestone for Maka and the ACMV and our industry. We are working towards become the annual premium business and trade event. That will be an important date on the trade calendar for the industry within the ASEAN region. Mavex is a platform that is driven by the industry for the industry. We look forward for this platform that provides our stakeholders with business networking opportunities. Besides an all day exhibition, there will be an industry conference, forums, and many more exciting highlights at Mavex. excited as you are with Marvex 2021. Be sure to stay on until the end to know how you can be part of this excitement. All right, back to today's session. Ladies and gentlemen, when you stay to the end of this Power Talk, 
you will learn on how to discover the most energy efficient and environmentally friendly technologies that are currently being used in the ACMV and our industry and how they may improve long-term energy efficiency and savings. So if you have any questions that you'd like to direct to our panelists, feel free to type in your questions in the comments and we will answer them at the end of the session. Our topic for today's Power Talk is going green and saving money. And we are honored to have three special guests as today's panelists. We have Dr. King Yeong Jin, Head Department of Laboratory Management and Safety Administration, Lee Kong Chian, Faculty of Engineering and Science, University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Derek Chen, Senior System Engineer, Elko Malaysia Sales and Services Syndrome Bohard, and Mr. Chong Chi Hong, General Manager of InsaForm Insulation Malaysia Syndrome Bohard. Today's session is moderated by technologist counselor Haji Abdul Walid bin Abdul Hamid, founder and owner of Sepsis Training and Services Resources. Let me share a quick background to introduce our moderator for today. He has close to 38 years of working experience with five years in Malaysian Shipyard and Engineering MSE, from downstream to upstream as a technical instructor in and conditioning, of which 15 years worth of technical experience and four years worth of experience as a curriculum officer and three years as licensed counselor in Mara, four years as a credit control officer, four years as the external industrial training unit, and three years as the deputy director of students affairs and administration. He's also an expert in coaching, PSI numerology, psychology metrics, change management process, and strategy development for leaders and employees. He is a highly skilled facilitator, very adept to at engaging people at every level and across culture which customize workshop and provides cost-effective counseling, coaching, and consulting intervention to deal with specific performance issues and challenges. He also has proven capability in delivering real performance improvement at the workplace, individual, and team levels in organization. Inchik of the Wallet is a psychologist, corporate trainer, and consultant with business facilitation, entrepreneurial, and superior ability in diagnosing performance issue, problems, challenges across the value chains. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring in Inchik Abdul Walid on screen with me. Hi, Hi Joy. Mr. Walid. Hi, yeah, how are Joy. you? Fine, fine, Joy. Good to uh, see you. Interesting when you introduced me just now. So <laughs> very, very, you know, quite uh, informative that you give. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, All right, over to you. Can I continue? Yes, okay. over to you. Uh, thank you for, for the introduction, Joy. A very good afternoon and a well warm welcome to all of you to Marvac Power Talk series. I am Walid and I am your moderator today. Today's topic is going about going green and saving money where IAQ or indoor air qualities will lead to sick building syndrome. And is the main causes of maintaining emission and operation in efficiencies. The session will, will explore how ACME system can help commercial industries, facilities, large corporations and small and medium side businesses, as well as resi resident con con customer to conserve important natural resources using the most efficient and environmental, environmentally friendly technologies, which result in saving on utility bills. And as mentioned by Joy earlier, we have a panel of three specialists who are expert in the field to share and further discuss on this topic with us here today. And there are speaker number one, Dr. King Yu Jin. He is a head of the Department of Laboratory Management and Safety Administration at Lee Kong Chian Fac Faculty of Engineering and Science, University Tuanku Abdul Rahman. And the second speaker is Mr. Derek Ching, Senior System Engineer of Alku Malaysia Sales and Services Sendiran Bahar. And for our third speaker, is Mr. Chong Chi Hu, General Manager of Insafoam 
installation migration center in Baha. Before I introduce the first panelist, ladies and gentlemen, do feel free to drop your question in the comment section. Starting who the question is for, and we will do our best to answer them at the forum discussion letter. Okay? Now, let me introduce the first panelist. Dr. King graduated with a PhD in Mechanical Engineering from University of Technology of Malaysia since 2018. He has been actively involved in R&D activities. He first joined the Capital uh, Offshore and Marine Technologies Center, Private Limited, or Comtech. As a research scientist, he then joined the University Chunku Abdurrahman in early 2010 as a lecturer and continued to be actively involved in the research activity, including noise and vibration in research work. He is also active in providing consultation and industry solutions to industries. He is currently the head for the Department of Laboratory Management and Safety Administrative in Li Kong Chian Faculty of Engineering and Science, University Chengku Abdurrahman. He is also the current president of S3, Malaysian chapter in 2019. He obtained the professional technologies title from Malaysian Board of Technologies. Without further ado, let me invite our first speaker to join me on the screen. Dr. Hello. King, can you please share Hello. your experience you. and knowledge about green SME system? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Wally. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So this is, uh, is my pleasure to be invited to talk uh, at this Marvek Power Talk. So I'm King from uh, UST Tungu Abdurrahman. So uh, what is green MCMV? So we can achieve green SCMV by uh, increase the energy efficiency of our system and hence uh, achieve cost saving in long-term operations. The green SCMV will also uh, help in reducing the greenhouse gases and environmental footprint. Besides installing more efficient equipment, uh, we may also reduce the energy consumption by reducing the cooling load required in the buildings. So this can uh, can be done through a better design, including uh, building orientations, selections of windows types, wall, selections of equipment in the space, for example, low heat generation office equipment, and etc. Uh, by having a better design, uh, this will also help to uh, improve the indoor environmental quality which include the indoor air qualities, lighting, noise, etc. To be uh, so, this way can keep the equipment uh, safe and healthy. So, uh, the chart show the typical energy breakdown in the building, which was extracted from the building energy efficiency guideline from active design uh, published by the Building Sector Energy Efficiency Projects Malaysia. So we can see that SCMB play an important role on the energy uh, use in the buildings. Hence, by reducing the energy consumption uh, at the, of the SCMB in the buildings, will give a great impact on the total energy use. As mentioned before, uh, other good design practice will also help to reduce the total energy consumption. For the uh, for example, selecting more energy efficient of uh, office uh, equipment and also lighting. When we look at this table, it is the uh, electricity tariff in Malaysia. Uh, it, uh, so uh, actually, uh, Malaysia electrical city tariff is still a uh, relative law compared to our neighboring countries. Uh, this could be one of the reasons that uh, lead to uh, uh, unable to push most of the uh, people to invest into uh, green or more efficient equipment. Yeah? Because the return of this investment will be slow. Uh, besides that, uh, I do believe that there are many uh, 
would like to go green, especially for SEMV system, but do not know how to do it properly. So if the planning is not right, the outcome of the investment may not be significant. And this will further affect the other to go for the environmental family design. So what can we do? Uh, school in school, uh, school are doing quite well in promoting environmentally friendly activities, right? Uh, the, the three R, the reduce, reuse and recycle campaign. The knowledge of energy efficiency can also be implanted into the young generation because we are living in the world that can't get rid of all equipment and gadgets that provide a good living lifestyle. Actually, more campaign and activity should be done in uh, bringing the awareness of the adult on energy conservation. I believe there are professionals here listen to this webinar. I would like to urge all the professionals to propose the green solutions or options to your customers or your end users. Uh, we, we should not just meet uh, their specification or requirement. As many end users do, does not have uh, sufficient knowledge about how to achieve better efficiency uh, of their ACMV system. This has to be culture and educate by our professionals. I've also noticed that there are various of initiatives or incentives that have been put up by our government to encourage the consumer to go for more energy efficient system, which include the engine energy rating and the safe programs. So it can be uh, further enhanced with incentive through electricity tariff and maybe other activity, which will lead to creating awareness to the public. Those can be uh, social activities or solutions sharing uh, through some sample uh, demo projects. So this is the energy rating, as I mentioned, the guideline for energy efficiency level. So there are a few of it is related to SCMV industries. So those are the guide on the minimal energy performance standards, uh, requirement for air conditioners, for refrigerators, as well as the uh, freezer. Uh, there is also a program, sustainability uh, achieved well energy efficiency, or we call it SAFE, uh, now is 2.0. So which is under the uh, SEDA, which is the Sustainable Energy uh, Development Authority Malaysia. So if you are interested to know more, you can actually visit the SEDA website. Uh, as shown here. Okay, so uh, for for this, I also would like to share some of the resources that you can obtain uh, locally and uh, overseas, because there are a lot of resources related to uh, green SEMB. Uh, they actually available uh, to be referred uh, from a local source and overseas. So, for example, the building sectors energy efficiency projects that we uh, is, which is supported by the United Nations uh, Development Program and uh, funded by uh, Global Environment, Environment Facilities. Uh, so this for this, J uh, Japatan Kajaraya or JKI is an agency under the Ministry of Work, uh, which is executing MDP and implementing a partner of these projects. So this building energy efficiency technical guideline for active as well as the passive design they provide a lot of useful information that are also, uh, uh, and also you'll find there are other publications that is uh, very useful and is actually available at this uh, DC, uh, website. At the same time, uh, uh, DOSH also uh, published the uh, Industrial Code of Practice for Indoor Air Quality in 2010, right? So this can be used uh, to uh, this is used to create a healthier and a safer working place. As what I know, this code of practice is expected to be updated uh, very soon because it's already uh, more than ten years. Uh, since I'm actually uh, from Ashray, uh, I would uh, like to highlight that in Ashray you can find the Ashray. Uh, there is a lot of Ashray standard and guideline available. So you can find the ASHRAE standard 62, 
So over here you can say see that there is a 62.1 for for non-residential and 62.2 is actually uh, for residential buildings. So it depends on your requirement. Uh, you can refer to the uh, respective document. So this document actually uh, focus on the uh, minimum requirement for ventilation for the acceptable indoor air qualities. There are also standard uh, 189 on the standard for design of high performance uh, green buildings. So Ashray also have an Ashray Green Guide, which is available to help you uh, to answer your big questions. So what do I do now right, in order to get to be uh, green? So besides that, Ashray and his partner also uh, making the advanced energy design guideline available for free download. Right? So this is free downloads. So there are more to be explored uh, in the Ashray website and uh, please feel free to visit the Ashray website. Uh, okay, so in summary, uh, for individual, uh, Go Green can start from uh, very small steps, get to know uh, how to be more energy efficient and uh, further reduce the pollution. We should live in a greener and cleaner environment for, for and for professionals, uh, we should also provide solutions to our clients or customers and most of the time they do not know how what to do. So as Ashray uh, slogan, we are shaping tomorrow built environment today. So uh, this is the end of my presentations. Thank you very much. I would like to pass the session back to uh, Mr. Wallet. Yeah, th uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. King, for the insightful uh, sharing. Well, to summarize what Dr. King uh, said regarding green SMB system, we can see how this can increase the energy efficiency while reducing cooling load in the building. And another thing that, that we can find out from the from what the statement given by Dr. King, is sharing is the truly safe cause for the benefit uh, of the consumer. That's true, Dr. King? Okay. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Dr. King. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to our second panelist, Mr. Jory Chen, a very handsome guy, uh, more like... Uh, uh, Korean artist. <laughs> okay. He is a senior system, uh, senior system engineer of Alku Malaysia Sales and Services Center Bahad. Mr. Jerry started his career in Alku Malaysia in 2012 as a system engineer after graduating with a bachelor degree in electrical and electronic. Engineering honors from Belford University, UK. They regain ample of experience in the technical system designing, focusing to provide the best green cooling solution to all types of industry or sectors. For the past nine years with Alku Malaysia, he has successfully participated in major projects like the Kajang Hotel, Plastic. Molding Factory in Shah Alam, Kuala Lumpur General Hospital, Asian Pacific University, TCM Office Building in Kuala Lumpur, Fabric Factory in Johor, and many more. With all the above experience, there is an experienced senior system engineers and a great team player and will continually contribute to the promotion of green product to the world through Alku. With that, let's invite Derek to join me on the screen. So Derek, can you please share your experience and knowledge about Alku product with latest technology system? To you, Mr. Derek. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khalid. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So without further ado, I will go into my presentation. So Elko Malaysia is actually an international organization headquarters in Hong Kong, and we have a state-of-the-art manufacturing plant located in Guangdong, China. It encompasses over 100,000 square meters, fully modern, 
and uh, we have an industrial park that houses all comprehensive R&D testing platforms and also the most important is we have our own uh, recognized serum recognized and Sina certified testing chamber where we do all our testings our product testing to replicate any uh, conditions around the world yeah so uh, since the company uh, has been established uh, since about 10 years ago we also strive to be the major green cooling uh, solution provider so today Elco serves our, all clients around the world and we have a select medical team of professionals to cater for all your needs so moving on to our product range we have three core products so Elco Malaysia we have first we have our VWV hybrid chillers and then we have our photovoltaic chillers in short we call it pv chillers and then the third one we have our magnetic bearing oil free chillers so for our vwv hybrid chillers we can also break down to four more different versions we have our of course vwv hybrid chillers we have our vsd scroll chillers vsd screw chillers and also a hybrid chiller version that is the magnetic bearing oil free hybrid version so for our hybrid chiller system, our heart, the heart, the heart of the technology is actually our built-in evaporative cooling circuit. So what does this do is actually we have water dripping down through our condenser coil, cooling it, and then going through back up. So the most important thing is our condenser coil. So this hybrid evaporative system as shown here in our x-ray handbook is lower in energy consumption compared to conventional cooling powers of course we use less water and we with less water usage comes less energy usage also and we also have smaller footprint compared to you have multiple cooling tower systems so basically our hybrid chiller system is and any conventional air cool chiller combined with our evaporative high performance cooling circuit and that is our hybrid chiller system yeah. so our hybrid chiller system utilizes our high performance evaporative condenser coil is a german technology fully stainless steel design and its enhanced reliability due to its cube to plate uh, design so superior heat transfer and also we maximize on water efficiency which i will be going in detail soon okay some of our competitors design the disadvantages are as you can see here it dry spots occur at the bottom of the tube for those tube design and also corrosion on our second photo here we can see that the fins are gone due to corrosion so uh, the third photo you can see is rusting. Yeah, these are some of the advantages of uh, the competitor's design. They need tube design or shell and tube design. So for our Elco high performance uh, evaporative condenser, we are currently in our fifth generation tube to plate design, where we have gas in tube and water on plate for uh, double protection. Also, uh, to enhance its reliability, we utilize SUS 304 stainless steel L, and then we also utilize falling from water distribution technology, where we have the uh, cooling tube designed as thin as possible, or rather as flat as possible, and we have the water flow through like a water flow to maximize heat transfer, and this is a fully patented hybrid design. So our hybrid oil-free uh, chiller technology version, we utilize the double-core oil-free centrifugal compressor technology. So what does this benefit us is it's able to tolerate and achieve a very high degree of reliability. And also it has integrated two-stage centrifugal compressor where the shaft is levitated using magnetic levitation technology and uh, it which which during this, uh, having this technology, we can have 120 times per revolution, which means high speed, uh, centrifuge, uh, high speed bearing technology, yeah, high speed rotation. So this is the cutaway of our uh, magnetic bearing technology of the double core compressor. So this one is the 
a view of the magnetic levitation. We have a two-stage centrifugal compressor shaft and tube turbo core compressor here. So for our photovoltaic inverter chiller, uh, our green photovoltaic inverter chiller, yes, it's mainly we are utilizing uh, the solar energy and then it's able to provide a utilization ratio of up to 99%. And also system efficiency is six to eight percent higher than normal conventional solar panel methods yeah it's also exceptionally energy saving intelligent and adaptable which i will go through in detail so the main core advantage and technology of our photovoltaic chillers are as shown here number one pv direct driven technology where we have our PV circuits, also the solar panels, directly connected to our chiller system with built-in converters. That saves up 6% of uh, energy efficiency. Yeah. And then we have maximum point power tracking. What does this do is it eliminates the uh, stabilization units, which is the AC to DC converters, thus provide up to 99% of energy utilizations which means reduce energy wastage. Then we have pulse amplitude wide modulation. What does this do is it interleaving the control and self-adapting to respond to peak changes in PV voltage. Basically, it's to stabilize the system, yeah. And then we have power integrated management. This is one of the most important uh, core technology where we analyze and control in real time the ratio between the solar intensity the AC load and also the PV utilization to provide stable and high energy uh, utilization. Yeah. Ternary commutation is also one built in uh, component where this uh, system monitors the current condition of the PV and solar uh, working condition and it automatically changes within five different working modes where we use, example, we fully utilize solar energy or we can go for half solar half ac or full ac depending on the uh, like i said solar intensity uh, during the day and then moving on some of the photovoltaic chiller benefits are as uh, shown here uh, we can reduce dust by 220 tons save fuel about 216,000 liters save coal about 300 tons CO2 emission, this is very important, about 830 tons, and so on and so forth. Yeah. If by just utilizing photovoltaic chillers. So on to our last and final product, our magnetic bearing oil free chiller system is of course, as shown here on the graph, you can see it's higher in efficiency. The blue is the magnetic oil free chiller. Red is the AC inverter echo inverter chillers and of course ordinary inverter chillers so the benefits of having a magnetic bearing oil free chillers are of course higher efficiency energy saving and also lower utility consumption yeah. so magnetic bearing our main technology is it also utilizing the magnetic bearing levitation technology where the bearing as can be seen in the graph beside is magnetically levitated Thus, produce, produce, uh, produce no friction, no wear and tear, or any abrasions, which will lower the mechanical losses and enhance the operation efficiency. Yeah. And also, due to having a magnetic bearing levitation technology, we do not utilize any lubricating oil, lubricating system, and oil return system. So the whole oil cooling system is not needed, thus lower maintenance costs and also there are no oil leaking issues and here are some of the benefits of our magnetic bearing oil free chiller of course high efficiency and energy saving no friction or abrasion no oil components needed which means no oil needed power failure energy feedback where we have the uh, motto of the chillers to run on idle mode so that it doesn't stop abruptly and causes uh, causes a temporary failure of the motor or any uh, wear and tear and then of course low noise level low total harmonic distortion is one of the important uh, elements in energy 
and of course lower maintenance as there are low less components to be maintained so some of our saving awards and testimonies are example uh, Sri Krota Medical Hospital where you can see we have electrical saving of up to RM28 to 36,000 after switching to our hybrid chiller hybrid modular chiller system and then we have Inti College about 25,000 of saving Prescott Kajang uh, Park Ditson Hospital and also our Lee Apple Hospital where we managed to reduce the cost per room by half so moving on here are some of the awards and honors healthcare issue award 2019 awarded to Sri Kota Medical Center for energy saving and improving facility we have a Ministry of Health approval and also Mighty Jiao certificate we have some customer customers testimonial from of course Ministry of Health for the Port Dyson Hospital and also uh, the Apple Boutique Hotel and uh, this ends my presentation I'll pass the session back to uh, Mr. Wally. Okay, thank you very much, Derek, for sharing your valuable experience with us. Sure, and, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And I, I think after having this uh, discussion, now we know why our school are able to serve clients from all over the world, from their expert technical team, like you, Mr. Derek, that has years of of experience to the uh, varieties of product fringe technologies provided by Alku. For those that are interested, can reach out to Mr. Derek after this. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Derek. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you very much. Okay, audience. Now let we move on to our third panelist for today. He is Mr. Chu Chi Hong. Uh, I think. Uh, my pronunciation is okay, eh, Mr. Chu. Uh, General Manager of Insafum Insulation Nation Center in Berhad. Mr. Chu is currently holding the position of General Manager in three companies Insafum Insulation Center Berhad, the manufacturers Insafum Technologies LLC, the direct cooling contractors. He is in charge of the overall sales and marketing. Operations, technical, project management, and company strategy for InsaFoam HQ in Malaysia and their branch in Dubai. He has more than 16 years of experience in manufacturing, project management, and district cooling. He has successfully designed and implemented the first and only fully automated pre insulated pipe manufacturing machine in Malaysia. Without further ado, let me welcome Mr. Chu to join me on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chu will talk about the green insulation product, CFC and HCFC free to you, Mr. Chu. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Wally. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chong from Insafoam Insulation. We are the leading insulation manufacturers in Southeast Asia. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our green insulation products. Global warming is a major issue of the world today. It is caused by increasing concentrations of greenhouse gases. Climate change has caused many extreme weather, sea level increase and ecosystem imbalance. Greenhouse gases warm the earth by absorbing energy and slowing the rate at which the energy escape to space. They act like a blanket insulating the earth. Different GHG can have different effect on the earth warming. The global warming potential was developed to allow comparisons of the global warming impacts of different gases. Specifically, it is a measure of how much energy the emissions of one ton of a gas will absorb over a given period of time relative to the emission of one ton of carbon dioxide. The larger the GWP, the more that a given gas warms the earth compared to CO2. Ozone depletion is also another problem that we face. Some chemicals damage the earth protective ozone layer in the stratosphere. 
Stratospheric ozone is a naturally occurring gas that filters the sun ultraviolet radiation. Consequently, any thinning of the ozone layer allows more radiation to reach to the Earth's surface. In terms of human health, overexposed to UV rays can lead to can skin cancer, disruption of ecosystem, and weaken immune systems. Ocean depleting potential is the ratio of calculated ozone column change for each mass unit of a gas emitted into the atmosphere relative to the calculated depletion for the reference gas CFC-11. CFC and HCFC refrigerant is one of the main factors that has caused global warming and ozone depletion. In 2000, Malaysia DOE and UNDP collaborated to form strategies and create initiatives to phase out HCFC usage in Malaysia. Stage 1 happened in 2012 to 2015. UNDP have selected 11 leading manufacturers in Malaysia to participate in the program. Insafoam is one of the manufacturers selected in the first round. Stage 2 happened during 2015 to 2020 for the remaining manufacturing sector and reduction HCFC usage in servicing sector. And now we are in stage 3. Suppose should concentrate in further reduction in HCFC usage in servicing sector only. However, there are some manufacturers still using HCFC in their manufacturing process. Thermal insulation is an important technology to reduce energy consumption of a building. Polyurethane is one of the best and most common used insulation material in the world and with the best K value of 0.022. Reducing energy consumption not only can save operating costs but also contribute to the reduction in greenhouse gas emission. Apart from prevent heat loss or gain in, of the building. Thermal, energy, uh, thermal insulation also play a very important role in HVAC system. Insulation can help improve efficiency of HVAC system, reduce carbon em emissions, cut operating costs, prevent condensation, and extend piping lifespan. Besides, pre-insulated pipe and duct can further help in reducing manpower workforce required at site. Pre-insulation is important in reducing risk of quality issue, construction time, and manpower required at site, especially during this COVID pandemic. Reducing manpower at site can reduce the risk of COVID spread. In Safom, as the leading insulation manufacturer in Southeast Asia, we have committed not to use any CFC and HCFC material in our product. Our high efficiency product helps in reducing energy consumption for many projects, one of which is the tallest building in the world, Burj Khalifa, located in UAE. Our product range includes pre-insulated pipe, pre-insulated duct, spray foam for building insulation, walk-in refrigerator or cold room, and thermal storage tank. We have selected Cyclopentane as our new blowing agent since 2013. This is a new blowing agent provides zero ODP and eight GWP. In compare with HCFC uh, 141B, which have 0 0.11 ODP and 700 GWP. If we compare 141B and cyclopentane, they are 692 GWP or CO2 equivalent difference. In other words, using one ton of cyclopentane instead of 141B could save 11,442 trees. In 2020, one year alone, we have consumed nine, more than 19 tons of cyclopentane, which means we have saved 221 trees in a year. This is the physical properties comparison between cyclopentane and HCFC 141B. From the comparison, we can see that the performance of cyclopentane is very similar to 
141B. Therefore, we did not compromise the performance even though we are using a green product. Thank you very much. And this is the end of my presentation. We are welcome for any queries. Kindly contact us. This is our contact details. Now I pass the session back to Mr. Walid. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chu, for your sharing. It's very informative. And now, short brief of the summary, what uh, Mr. Chung has said just now, that is that now we can truly understand the importance uh, of pre-installation in energy saving and construction, how this technology can reduce the energy consumption of a building, while it can reduce the risk of quality issues. It also can improve on construction time and manpower at the site to add on this also can reduce risk of COVID pandemic. So good job on explaining about this, Mr. Mr. Chu. To the audience, ladies and gentlemen, uh, attention to all our friends. Friend, feel free to ask any question at the comment section. And remember to mention who the question is for, okay? And now we have heard from all the speakers. To summarize from this discussion, we can see how easy it is to go green and at the same time saving costs. One, we can have a good indoor air quality, IAQ, we can minimize the risk of having sick building syndrome. Now, we shall move on to the discussion forum and tackle some questions from the audience. Let me invite Dr. King, Mr. Jarek, and Mr. Ku to rejoin us on this screen. Hi. 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 Good Dr. King, Good Mr. Jarek, and Mr. Ku. Oh, everybody is already ready and come <laughs> <laughs> to answer the question from our audience. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. Guy, let me begin the discussion forum. Now we open to the floor, yeah, the audience. If you all have any question to ask the panel, for those who wish to share any information with related to discussion today, are also well welcome. Any responses from the audience? No. If not, I have a question to ask the speakers. The speakers, are you ready? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, because uh, some of the uh, questions asked from the audience, maybe they can, uh, I mean, uh, call you all later because some some of the questions need a lot of uh, explanation. Yeah, it's not easy to answer in very short time. Okay, sure. sure. Thank you very much. Okay, to Dr. King, the first speaker. Uh, could you share more about the useful information available about S3, Dr. King? Thank you, uh, Mr. Wally. Yeah. So actually, uh, we can see that uh, the other two speakers are focused a lot on the industry. So yeah. I will be covering more in general. So in yeah. S3, actually, um, there is a... Uh, uh, Advanced Energy Design Guide, we call it AEDG. You can just search uh, X-ray AEDG, where actually uh, X-ray uh, provide the, the energy guide that uh, you can, uh, that is available for 30% energy saving, 50% energy saving, and, okay. and also a zero energy uh, building guide. Okay. So uh, I think those who are interested, you can just Google the X-ray AEDG. Uh, and this is actually available uh, free for download. So you can uh, you can read all those documents that give you more idea on how to be uh, how to make your energy building more energy efficient okay. and uh, saving yeah in long term. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doctor uh, Doctor Kings. Okay, hmm. back to other speakers. Uh, Mr. Derry, are you ready? Sure. Okay. 
<laughs> right. Actually, there's got a lot of question from our audience to you, uh, Mr. Derry. True. I see. I'm happy uh, to hear. You have yeah. to answer uh, personally to them. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't fail them. No okay? problem. Sure. Because <laughs> it's part of uh, the business also. Okay. Question <laughs> to Mr. Derry. Can you elaborate further on your magnetic bearing oil free chiller in terms of green aspect wise? I think uh, one of the audience also have uh, asked this question mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. about the magnetic bearing oil. Can you explain sure. a little bit more? Okay, actually, our magnetic bearing, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, utilize the magnetic levitation technology. So the internal motor bearing is magnetically levitated. So that means it causes less uh, friction and also wear and tear. We, and then there is also the uh, oil issue. We do not need to use any oil, lubricating oil, for the chiller system. And that reduces oil pollution. Yeah. Okay. And then also this magnetic bearing uh, levitation technology improves the heat exchanger's efficiency, hence reduce uh, energy utilization. And also the bearing is lifetime design. So by lifetime design, it means there is less to no uh, maintenance changes needed for the bearing system, hence less material usage. Yeah. So these are some of the uh, green aspects mm -hmm. for the chiller. Yes. Which means less major uh, overhaul, I would say. Yeah, overhaul maintenance. That's, that's all, Mr. Derek? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. Yeah, this is the three main oh, okay. uh, green aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe some of the audience also have asked about the magnetic uh, bearing, you know, oil mm -hmm. bearing. So I think uh, uh, Mr. Derek already answered some of their question. And then, and last and not least, I think uh, I would like to focus to Mr. Chung. Hi, Mr. Chung. Hi. Mr. Chu, how are you? I'm okay. good. Uh, maybe uh, this question can uh, can also share with the audience, you know, regarding about pre-installation. This really can help in reducing COVID-19 spread. Okay. Uh, pre-installation hmm. means we have done the installation in a controlled okay. environment factory. Therefore, we can use a minimum manpower during the installation and then with less manpower, definitely will reduce greatly okay. on the risk of COVID and construction downtime. Okay. That's all? Yeah, that's all. Mm. Very short and precise, Mr. <laughs> Chu. Um, very good. Okay. Finally, to our audience and all uh, our speakers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the definition of green in ACME is not just how efficient the equipment are, but also how the system works, which include the reduction of heat gain in any building. Choosing the right supplier and expert when making this decision are the key to the success of choosing to go green and saving more money in the long run. Is that true? Okay. Yes. Before we end this session, can we have our panelists give us the number one key takeaway for our audience in line with today's topic? Are you ready? All our meter speakers? <laughs> Let's start with Dr. King. Do you have the, your key takeaway for our audience so that they will yeah. remember about you? Yeah, I think from my side, uh, I, I always say that uh, we, we can start from small and get it right. And then we will actually appreciate what we have done for, for that. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, Mr. Derek, do you have your yeah. key takeaway for our audience for today? Yeah. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, I would say that uh, I think in order to achieve a total or at least a uh, higher percentage of a uh, green solution and energy utilization. Uh, the main point we should know is uh, the awareness. Uh, the awareness should be very important. All right. All of okay. us should be aware of uh, how 
we can better treat our world and yeah. also to provide uh, advisors uh, to everyone here. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Derek. Awareness. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very young, young guy, handsome. Like thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, what about Mr. Chu? Do you have your key takeaway for our audience for today? Uh, yes. I think uh, preserving the environment by selecting the green products is the responsibility of everyone. Okay. And then pre installation can prevent all the quality issues and reduce, reduce dependency dependency of skilled labor also. Okay. I agree with Mr. Chong too. Okay, Mr. Chong. Okay, um, maybe uh, I would ask Hi, Mr. Chong to join with us today because some of the audience um, would like, I have some question that Mr. Uh, Ms. Joy like like to share with us to, to let the speaker to, to answer, especially uh, Mr. Derek, you know, you have a lot sure. of questions for the audience. <laughs> you, you better stay by. No okay. Joy. Hello, everyone. Hi, gentlemen. All right. We do Hi. have some questions from the floor, actually, uh, for all three gentlemen. Okay. Uh, first of all, our uh, first question is to Mr. Derek. Uh, please give a general explanation on how does the photovoltaic chiller works. Okay. Sure. No problem. Uh, for our photovoltaic chiller system, uh, actually the chiller is an ordinary centrifugal chiller system. Uh, for those who are familiar with it, I think they should know. Yeah. The only difference is we have a special inbuilt uh, system or unit inside the chillers to function as a photovoltaic chiller. So in, in simple terms, we have our solar panels, solar panels connected to our chiller system and the solar panels will provide energy current to our chillers and the chiller will run that is how it works <laughs> uh, and then uh, i think these questions have a further explanation to proceed so i shall proceed further uh, the chillers function just as normal you know you provide energy to the uh, chillers and it will run but uh how does this photovoltaic chillers function actually is uh, depends on your system design so normally uh, for the chillers to function we need to provide 100 percent current to the chillers so you have to design your solar panels to provide 100 percent chiller current yeah, but uh, that is not advisable at this moment as you have to have a big space for your solar panels yeah so usually uh, how we design is we will design based on 60 percent energy uh, usage for the chiller through solar and the other 40 percent will be through ac current yeah and then our own inbuilt system will switch and uh, analyze which power source to obtain during the whole day because we have a uh, from uh, cloudy all the way to sunny and uh, during the night time. Yeah. So that's how it functions. All right. uh, okay. All right. I guess that's answer the question to the what is the minimum solar power required to run the PV chiller? Am I correct? Uh, not not exactly also because uh, <laughs> the minimum, I, I, I will explain that uh, question. The minimum mm -hmm. energy or current required to run our photovoltaic chiller, actually there is no minimum. The chiller will run when you provide current to them, so it's supposed to be 100%. It's how you design your system and how much you want to design for your photovoltaic solar panels to provide the percentage of current, yeah. There, there are no minimum uh, current to run our chiller system. Yeah, uh, all right. Okay, all right. Yes, all right yes. thank you so much. Since we are with Mr. Derek, um, I got one more question that I could I would I want to ask you. Sure. Can PV system use on this magnetic bearing oil chiller? Which is a question from Mr. Lao Hin Chen. Okay. Would you like to answer? Uh, that? For for our PV system currently now our photovoltaic chillers are only compatible with centrifugal chiller system. Uh, for magnetic bearing, uh, unfortunately, we are unable to utilize it now due to different components, especially the uh, magnetic levitation bearing yeah. 
So it's only for centrifugal series. Yeah. Okay. Due to the uh, complexity, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. You you have anything to add on? Actually, I was I wanted to say it's due to the complexity of a uh, magnetic bearing components and parts. We cannot utilize the solar PV system. Okay, got it. Thank you for so now, much, Mister Derek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure, thank uh, you. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to our next question, which is, um, I would like to direct this to Mr. Chung. What is the life cycles of the insulation? Over to you, Mr. Chung. Okay, the life cycle of insulation, uh, actually it can last 30 to 50 years. So, uh, normally we will not experience the end of the life cycle of the insulation because before the end of the life cycle of the insulation, the equipment will spoil first. <laughs> so most of the time we do not face this problem. So, but then uh, poly polyurethane is a very good insulation material. Normally it can last at least 30 years. Mm. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. One more question <laughs> to uh, Dr. King. Any suggestion or comments about small office settings? Yeah, I think for for small office like uh, uh, shop lots and also home office, uh, I think then we talk about green and you know, energy efficient. So we also have to uh, be very careful on the indoor air quality. So we are we must make sure that the the indoor air quality is good, so that the occupants in the in the uh, space is uh, safe and healthy so uh, that's why uh, uh, but luckily in Malaysia most of our house and office has a lot of infiltration so what does it mean is actually we, we do allow the outdoor air to enter our space so that uh, the uh, for example the CO2 level and, and so on uh, are maintained in a good good uh, level so uh, if you find out that the, the, the CO2 level in your, in your space is high, uh, you can actually uh, try to do something, for example, like turning on some uh, exhaust fan in your space. Right? So or, in, or, or on and off, you can on, uh, open or uh, close your windows and or door so that to improve the indoor air quality. Uh, so that's why the, for energy efficiency, we, we also have to take care of other elements as well. All right, thank you so much, Dr. King. Okay, I have to have one more question for Mr. Chung. Uh, this is from Mr. Ng. Okay, Mr. Chung, from uh, how does INSA form handles the flammable blowing agent, cycloplantain? Oh, actually, <laughs> cycloplantain is uh, very flammable, okay, and then it is like petrol. So, in order to handle this, we have upgraded all our machineries. To be spark free and then we have a very uh complete uh monitoring control system to monitor the cyclopentane concentration in our factory so of course with a good ventilation to ensure the safety of the people so basically cyclopentane is just like petrol we actually we treat it our factory is something like a petrol station as well so mm -hmm. with a very good air ventilation and then good control of uh, uh good monitoring of the concentration of the cyclopentane gas so we can manage it okay thank you so much all right i guess that's all the questions we have for today but however if you do have any questions for the speakers please feel free to contact them uh separately on their through email or to contact, okay? Yeah. All right, uh, I guess I'll pass the session back to uh, the moderator, Mr. Walid, over back to you. Okay, Joyce, thank you very much. Okay, You're welcome. a very good sharing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I would like to take this opportunity, opportunity to say a big thanks you to our panelists today, Marvel, Power Talk, and we at Marvel are very excited to welcome all suppliers, manufacturers to be on board on the business event to rebuild our industry together. So, when you would like to discover how to be part of this business event or in this Power Talk series, our team 
has posted a link in the comment box and do click on the link to schedule an appointment with our marketing team for further discussion. And finally, do stay tuned for our next Power Talk session. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye, everybody. And love you Bye. all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.